Hey there, everybody. Nathan Nelson here. Welcome back to another episode of How I Got the Shot. Now, for those of you who might be new here, what I do with this series is I take you guys behind the scenes. I show you all of the lighting that I'm using, the modifiers, the lights, the positioning, my camera settings, the cameras I'm using, literally all of the information and show you exactly how I create the images that I create. Hopefully just to give you guys a little bit of you know, inspiration or some ideas, just anything that you can use with your photography going forward. So that being said, these are the type of images that we're gonna create today. Let's just get into it. All right, so here we are in the studio and I'm using three lights to create this setup. Now for my main light, I'm using two 8600 Pro heads that are firing into medium deep umbrellas, which are then passing through a large 12 by 12 scrim. And the reason for this is it just creates one large, super soft light source, much like a, a window with indirect light coming through it. It's just really beautiful, soft looking, flattering light. Now my third light is another 8600 Pro with a large umbrella with the diffusion panel attached. Now I am gonna take you guys through each light individually so you can see how each light factors into the final image that we're creating. But first, let's just walk a little bit more through the set. Now for my backdrop, I'm using a custom painted backdrop from Unique Backdrops. And if any of you are out there looking for a custom painted canvas backdrop, I really cannot recommend Unique Backdrops enough. Their work is absolutely Stunning. I've got four of their backdrops right now. This one is my Irving Penn edition, and I can just say that it is absolutely beautiful. And then from there, I just took a large cloth sheet and I hung it from the middle just to bring out, you know, a little bit more detail, a little more texture into the image, just a little bit more depth, just trying to create a little bit more interest, which is something I obviously say a lot. Now for my camera, I'm shooting on the Nikon Z6 Mark II and I've got the Nikon Z 85 millimeter F1.8 lens attached to it. And as always, I'm tethered into Capture One Pro. Now for my main light, as I was saying before, I'm using two lights to create one large light source. Now the reason that I'm firing the lights into umbrellas before passing that light back through the, the 12 by 12 scrim is that I wanted the light that comes through that scrim to already be a large, broad, soft form of light. If I just fired the lights directly through the scrim, it would create essentially kind of like hot spots in the image. And I wanted the light to be very soft, very flattering. Like I was saying before, as if it was indirect light coming through a window. The way to accomplish that is to fire the light back up into an umbrella and then let that already diffused broader spectrum of light come through the uh, diffuser and just create just really soft, really flattering, really easy to control light. Now, if I took these lights and I labeled them light A and light B, we'll start with light A. And as you can see, it's a little bit closer to the right side of the scrim and it's a little bit higher. Then we take light B and it's a little bit lower and positioned a little bit further into the scrim. And that's again, just giving me sort of that angular light as if the light was coming down from the top and kind of coming across the model. And so with staggering that light, it's just helping to create just a broader, kind of more even light source coming out of the scrim versus just having both lights up nice and high. It's staggered, one higher, one lower, just to, again, even out that lighting a little bit. Now, if we look from the front of the scrim, as you can see, the lights are still not just positioned randomly in behind this scrim. So the lighting is still coming from the front of the model. You can see the light here, light A and light B, they're still positioned ahead of the model. And the reason for that is I always wanna feather my light. So I want that light to travel across my model instead of hitting directly at, so that we get a really nice transition from light to shadow. So even though I'm using this very large light source, the way that it's positioned still matters. Now, just to show you what each light is doing individually, if we take light A, which is the light that was closer to the right side of the scrim and up a little bit higher, and show you just what that light does on its own, as you can see, you know, it's giving us a decent, looking light, but there's still a lot of contrast in there, more than I wanted in this image. And we're not getting that really kind of smooth window light looking effect. It looks a little bit harsher than I would like it to. So when we bring in light B, as you can see, it's just bringing out a lot more detail in the image. It's giving us more light on our backdrop. It's bringing out the shadow details. It's just offering a much smoother transition of light from the lights to the darks. And I just feel like it, 
It mimics that, that window feel a lot better than just one light source firing through this large scrim. Having the two in there really does just kind of create a little bit more of that flattering window light effect. Now, when we combine these two lights together and meter them at our model, we're getting a reading at F8 at 1 2 of a second at ISO 100. So of course that means I need to set my camera to F8 at 1 2 of a second at ISO 100. And that will give me the proper exposure. So now that we've got our main light sorted out, I still wanna add in some fill light. And the reason for that is I'm just still losing a little bit too much information in those darker areas. I feel it's a little bit too contrasty for what the, the final image I had in my head is. So I'm gonna bring in a fill light just to help bring out a little bit more of that detail. Now, as I was saying before, my fill light is a large umbrella with a diffusion panel attached. And I've got this set up as an on access fill. Now, what that means is that the fill is actually coming from the direction of the camera. So it's essentially coming from behind me and just giving us a very forward facing fill light. It's, it's filling in everything kind of like all around the model versus having it over to the side and just filling in one side. It's giving us an overall fill. And I, this is probably the most common source of fill that I use in my work. I really like to just bring out detail in everything versus just one little random part of the image. Now this light is metered to F2.8 at 1 2 of a second at ISO 100. And if I walk you guys through each light, we've got light A here, which gives us that first throw of light. And then when we bring in light B, that gives us a little bit more detail into the shadows. It's just starting to open things up. And when we add in our fill light, that's when we start to get the final results of the image. We start to bring out more detail in that backdrop into the shadows on our face. It just opens things up a little bit more. We don't lose that shaping that we're getting from our main light, but the fill light is just bringing in a little bit more detail so it's not so contrasty. It just feels more refined, more flattering, and just overall a lot more balanced. And so now that you've seen what each light is doing, here are a few of the final images from this shoot. And with that, that is another episode of How I Got the Shot, officially wrapped up and in the books. So if you guys did like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, use the comments box down below. That's what it's there for. I appreciate you guys being here and I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Cheers. <laughs>